Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. This one is another Call of Duty Zombies storyline video. How it does feel good to say that, as you guys know, if you're here a while, probably longer than a while, you know that I used to do a lot of zombie storyline videos back in the Ether storyline for like Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4 and stuff. It's sort of how we started our channel and sort of my introduction into the Call of Duty community on YouTube. It feels good coming back to that just for this video. We are going to go through the Dark Aether storyline and I'm going to give you guys an overview. I know a lot of people haven't kept up to date with this storyline, but after this video you should get the basic gist. I touch on sort of the events of the map whose gameplay is on screen and that is the Die Machine map. But obviously the next map then was Firebase C and I will touch on the storyline of that in another video. But yeah, if you do go on to learn something and do go on to enjoy this video, Make sure you do drop a like and of course subscribe for more zombie videos like this. We also do Warzone content. We have a lot of Call of Duty videos in the works. So if that does sound like something you would enjoy, make sure to subscribe. So there's about seven different chapters in this video and all credit goes to the Call of Duty fandom page. I used to interact with that back in the day. They do an amazing job on keeping all the details and all the backlinks and all the intel and stuff for Call of Duty Zombies, especially the storyline. So yeah, we're going to start off with the place below creation. After the events of Black Ops 4, we sort of fixed all the broken time loops, or what we thought was a fix. We obviously got one singular timeline. The rest of creation was indeed banished into the depths of the Dark Aether. Those unfortunate enough to be banished into the Dark Aether were quick to succumb to its corruption, with some rising from the dead and even new species emerging from it. While everything in the place below creation suffered eternal agony, the new universe was fairly at peace, with life finally able to continue as normal. So obviously in the Aether storyline we fixed everything, that was all wrapped up, and we thought that was it, that was the end, but this is the after events of those games. Moving on then to the closing of World War II. The Nazis were desperate to win the war by any means, with several programs dedicated to ensuring a victory. One of these programs was Uran Verin. This was dedicated to atomic research and uranium enrichment. During the summer of 1943, Kurt Deibner, the head of the Uran Verin division, approved the proposal of a massive particle accelerator and collider called the Cyclotron, designed by the doctors Vogel and Kurtz. Project N Station was funded and headed by Vogel. The site was located in a wooden area called Morasco in the then Nazi occupied Poland. So you can kind of put two and two together here on what Project End Station is. If you've played the map Die Machine, that is this end station. On March 7th, 1944, Vogel and Kurtz performed another test on the cyclotron. During the process, the particle accelerator malfunctioned and opened a localized rift between their world and another dimension, which was the Dark Aether. Creatures started coming through the gateway and men close to the collider started to turn into zombies. The small outbreak was contained, but the cyclotron was now operating on its own without external source of power. In the following days, Vogel began studying the victims of the incident, believing they were infected by an exotic element dubbed Exo Element 1. Vogel started working on a decontamination chamber designed to restore the brain activity of the fallen soldiers. Vogel was tasked with weaponizing the results from the decontamination chamber experiment, but come January in 1945, the Russians came ever so close to the facility, so Project End Station was abandoned. A week after it was abandoned, the Russians did discover Project End Station. They arrived in Morasco and even filmed themselves opening up the chambers. That is the intro clip we sort of see. Many soldiers realized that this was completely dangerous and some of them were locked inside. Sergeant Kazimir Zykov was tasked to stop the cyclotron. After being sealed inside the facility, Zykov successfully shut down the particle accelerator and died in the process. The film reels remained hidden for another 40 years. Intro then to Cold War. In March 1983, believing the United States were becoming a serious threat to the Soviet Union, the chairman ordered to restore the Omega Group, a special Spetsnaz unit. The Omega Group then did some research and found the film reels in an intelligence vault of the same year. After the rails were reviewed, the chairman authorized Omega Group to weaponize the findings of Project End Station and to harness the power of the cyclotron and the Dark Aether to give the Soviet Union a strategic advantage over the United States. Two officers by the name of Medvedev and Orlov were tasked with reactivating the collider. The men were successful, but Orlov was turned into a megaton in the process, which is the boss now that splits into two on the map of Die Machine. With the reactivation of the cyclotron, several gateways and dimension breaches started to appear around the world. 
And now we move towards sort of the intro to the Cold War Zombies universe that we've seen. An agent by the name of Samantha Maxis was given information that shit was going down in Poland, basically. She then received a copy of the End Station film from Tatiana, one of her contacts. And Samantha left the BND because she felt it was being compromised by the present day Omega group. She then went on to send the end station tape to the CIA. This is where we see her contacting Grigori Weaver and Samantha then goes off and kind of does her own thing that's not really relevant to the overview right now. The CIA creates a new department called the Requiem with Weaver becoming the head. He then recruits Dr. Elizabeth Gray, Dr. Oscar Strauss and Major Mackenzie Carver. These are the guys that you see in the bottom right of this map, the ones that are having a discussion back and forth. Requiem then launches a reconnaissance operation. A strike team is dispatched at the Project End Station facility where they discovered the Cyclotron and its gateway to the Dark Aether. During their exploration of the site, the strike team enters the other dimension. As we journey through the Easter egg then, obviously, because we are the strike team, we manage to resurrect Orloff using the decontamination device, also known as Der Weschler. He then assists us in deactivating the Cyclotron and closing the rift opened at Morasco. He warned the strike team that Omega Group have big plans. As Orloff stays behind to ensure the facility would be destroyed, Raptor 1 exfiltrated the team as a nuclear detonation accord. Weaver congratulates the team, but notes that the fight is far from over. And that is the close of the Die Machine map. That is map 1. And in the months following the destruction of Project End Station, more rifts started to appear around the world. And that sort of catches us up then to Firebase Z. I know that map is out a while. I thought I'd give you guys an overview all the way up to that point because I believe we are best doing the zombie storyline in sort of parts and sections. What you need to know is Firebase C is an Omega group facility and we go in to investigate. That's how it sort of leads into the second map. We can do this in sections. So there's a lot of information there as you guys know. Hopefully I explained it well. If you do have any questions, make sure to drop them down in the comment section below. This story has potential. I hope they don't give up on it like they did with the chaos story. And yeah, without further ado, I am going to leave the video here. Peace out, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in another video very, very soon.